Hey, it's Phil Meyer. Welcome to my guide for getting the most of your cross hop bars in Final Fantasy XIV. You have eight cross bars in total, and each job can have their own copies. Let's start with the basics and work ourselves up to the more detailed settings. You should already know that you can hold one of the triggers to activate your crossbar and then press the directional or face buttons to use an ability. You can change the activation method in the character configuration settings. Toggle will activate the crossbar when you tap a trigger and then deactivate when you tap it again. Mixed allows you to use both methods where you can either hold or tap. Even though you have a choice in activation options, I recommend leaving it at hold and I'll explain why later in the video. You can add more than just job actions to your crossbar, such as items, gear sets, macros, and emotes. When selecting something in the UI, press the left face button to bring up a context menu. If it's something you can add to your crossbar, it will be shown as such. You can cycle through your crossbars by tapping the right bumper. You can also directly select a crossbar by holding the right bumper and pressing a directional or face button. You can customize which crossbars can be cycled through in each weapon stance in the character configuration settings. In this example, when my weapon is drawn, I'll cycle through crossbars 1 and 2, and when my weapon is sheathed, I'll cycle through crossbars 5 and 6. Auto crossbar switch will automatically change your crossbar into whichever is first in your list whenever you change weapon stance. Using the crossbar cycle filters won't prevent you from changing to a crossbar directly. If cycling crossbars isn't your thing, you could instead consider setting only one crossbar in each filter, allowing you to use the right bumper tap as a reset button, always taking you to that first crossbar. Each job set has its own copy of all the crossbars, but you can also set any of the crossbars to shared, allowing them to be global across all your job sets. As an example, my job is currently set to White Mage. When I change to Red Mage, this crossbar changes. However, this crossbar has been set to shared, so when I change jobs it stays the same. The pet crossbar is technically a ninth special crossbar and you'll have access to it when you play a job that can summon a pet. Additionally, mounts that have actions and some fashion accessories will also use the pet crossbar. When the pet crossbar is accessible, it replaces the behavior of the right bumper buttons tap to switch. Instead it will toggle between your current crossbar and the pet crossbar. If you don't want to use the pet crossbar or don't want to switch to it automatically, there are options in character configuration where you can change this. The expanded crossbar lets you quickly access one of your other crossbars by first holding down a trigger and then holding the other trigger. You can choose which crossbar you have to show with each button combination. This can either be a specific crossbar or it can be dynamically set to the crossbar before or after your current one. I like to use the expanded crossbar to quickly access a shared crossbar with actions I use across all jobs. The double crossbar allows for even further expansion. When this setting is enabled, you can double tap either trigger to access yet another half of a crossbar. So here I'm double tapping the right trigger to access the right double crossbar, and then here I'm double tapping the left to access the left side. Note that you can't add abilities directly to the double crossbar. Instead, just like the expanded crossbar, you can choose which of your other crossbars are shown on each side. Earlier, I recommended using hold crossbar activation, and the reason for that is that toggle or mixed can disable the crossbar expansions. These expansions enable rapid access to three separate crossbars, which is a game changer. I recommend all controller players enable the expansions earlier so you start building that muscle memory. There are some additional settings for the double crossbar that you might want to understand. The input timeout specifies the time window for a double tap to be registered, which is similar to double clicking a mouse. If the value is too low, a double tap might not be registered. Conversely, if the value is too high, two single taps might be mistaken as a double tap. I find a value around 30 works for me, but consider experimenting and find what works best for you. You also have the option to return activation to your base crossbar after using a skill from the double crossbar. However, I don't favor this option as I find there are many cases where I want to use skills in succession from the double crossbar. If you want to position the double crossbar half separately from the base crossbar, there's an option you can use to enable that, after which you can use the HUD customization to place them where you want. First, select the element you want to move from the drop down, then you can use the right stick to position it where you want it. 
If you need more precision when placing these elements, you can enable the virtual mouse by first holding the left bumper and then pressing the right stick in. Use the virtual mouse to click on the element and then you can use the directional pads to precisely move it into place. Also, while you're in HUD configuration, you could consider changing the size of your crossbar if you'd like. The crossbar has several other settings that you can change to your preference. Most are self-explanatory, but these next few may not be. You can change the way the crossbar halves are displayed. By default, they are grouped together as full controller layouts, but you can also choose to display them by button cluster instead. Display crossbar help will show or hide the action text when a crossbar is activated. Display control guide shows or hides the button icons. Crossbar transparency allows you to set the fate of the crossbar depending on what state it's in. Standard is the neutral state. Active refers to the part of the crossbar that's been activated and whenever something's activated, the remainder is inactive. I like to set both the standard and inactive states to about half transparency. This lets me quickly scan the crossbars without them standing out too much against the game environment. So we've covered a bunch of options on how to configure the crossbar to your liking. In this next part of the video, I'll go over some additional tips that you may want to consider when setting up your crossbars. The first one is a lesser known setting that allows you to customize what the left and right stick buttons do. You can get to these via the controller customization settings. There are several choices as to what these buttons can do, but the most interesting ones are that they can be set to macros 98 and 99 specifically. By assigning macros to these slots, pressing the stick buttons will activate them, which opens up many possibilities. These button presses are global across all of your jobs and crossbars, which may allow you to optimize the real estate you use in the crossbars. After you've done the work of customizing your crossbars, you may decide that you want to move them around or even copy your layouts to different job classes. The slash C hotbar command allows for setting actions to your crossbar and even making copies of them. As an example, since all of the crafting jobs work the same way, I like to keep their crossbars in sync by copying my highest level crafting jobs crossbars to my other jobs. Going over all of these commands is outside of the scope of this video, but in the description you'll find some useful examples along with a link to more documentation. Now some considerations when deciding where to place your abilities in the crossbars. Since character movement is done with the left stick, you may want to reserve the controller face button for instant cast skills since those can be used while your character's moving. You may also just want to use the face buttons for skills that you use most often in combat. For the same reasons, I like to keep the first few crossbars as combat specific so I can easily change them when in a fight. Lastly, using the controller and crossbars doesn't prevent you from using standard hotbars as well. You can enable and position these using the HUD editor. Some people like to use these as a way to track ability cooldowns. That concludes my crossbar crash course. Thank you for watching the video, I really hope it helped you out. Special shout out to any Xbox players who might just be getting started with the game. I hope you're enjoying the start of your adventures in Aorcia.